Welcome to this episode of The Way We Farm. This week, we are north of uh, Daytona Beach. We are by the ocean. We're headed to the Commodity Classic in a couple days in Orlando. So I'm Vice President of the New York Corn and Soybean Growers Association. So on behalf of National Corn Growers, I'm gonna go down and uh, we're gonna discuss some important issues. We're gonna go see a lot of cool things. And in this video, hopefully we're gonna see some cool interviews with some of my Instagram and YouTube friends. So follow along and we'll uh, hope you enjoy this episode. Yeah, that's right. I do leave the farm once in a while. I got on my get up. I got on my Red Wings jeans and my t-shirt. That's what I wear on the beach. Sorry, hope you do too. Farming some bitch here at the Commodity Classic, looking at the Fent Ideal Combine. So, I am a John Deere guy, but a Fent Combine with green lights, that'd be pretty cool. This combine, 12 row folding corn head on tracks. Oh, I wish I could afford something like that. Maybe someday, maybe when this thing's 20 years old and it's got 5,000 hours on it, I can afford it. But that is a cool, cool combine. I would love to demo one someday. If anybody from Fence out there, the guy in Western New York wants to try one of these. Correction, 16 row corn head on the Fent Ideal Combine. That thing is cool, it doesn't even have a steering wheel. I'm sure most of you have seen these before, but it does not have a steering wheel. That would be kind of tough to get used to. But man, this thing would eat some corn. Okay, so if the people from Fent are gonna come out and do a demo with the combine, they might as well bring a tractor to put on the cart. Oh, they might as well bring a sprayer out. That'd be kind of cool to try. All wheel steer. You can't deny that Fent has some amazing equipment. Okay, so I gotta give John Deere its due. This combine is impressive. These X9s are unbelievable. The width of this flex draper head, Shoo! I got fields I could make two rounds in and they'd be done. So I still a John Deere man at heart, but uh, the fence and the Case IH, all of them are pretty cool. But Commodity Classic doesn't disappoint. For a small show, they sure get a, you get a lot of bang for your buck. We're not because we're started, okay? All right. all right, here we go. In three, two. Well, welcome back to U.S. Farm Report, our live taping here at Commodity Classic. Such a great crowd. Thank you all for joining us. Our panelists this weekend, Arlen Suderman, Chip Nellinger, as well as, as Mike Norton. Arlen, big... So here at Commodity Classic, we're staying in the Hyatt Regency right there. There's a bridge over the road, and the convention center is right here. This is a huge convention center. So I was just at a taping of the U.S. Farm Report. Now I'm headed back to the room to get Diane so we could go to the general session and hear the Secretary of Agriculture talk. Complex economy that has provided the greatest and strongest nation in the world. And you don't get enough thanks for that. You've created a food secure nation where we don't have to worry about where our food comes from. You all produce it. That's not true in a lot of countries. China, for one, they have to depend on somebody else. They have to depend on us we don't have to depend on anybody. That's a great gift. That makes us a more secure nation. And on top of all of that, folks in rural communities, folks on those farms and ranches, they send their sons and daughters into the military in disproportionate numbers. <coughs> on any given year, 15% of our country's population lives in rural places, but it could be as much as 30% of our military. Why is that? Some will say it's because folks want to get, uh, uh, want to have experiences. They want to, they want to see what the world looks like. That may be part of it, but I think there's a much deeper reason. I think kids who grow up in areas uh, that are surrounded by farmlands and ranch lands and and, and and groves, they understand a very basic fundamental principle of life, which you all have taught them, which is that you can't keep taking from something that gives value to you. How do I know that you know that? Because you do this with your land every single year. You know that it can't keep producing for you unless you put something back into it. You replenish it, you revive it, you nourish it. So day one of the Commodity Classic, so we're just hanging out in a trade show, and behind me, we just spent the last couple hours talking with Nick, Leg Arms, and Bob Welker, and then our friend Kevin Skippy from uh, uh, I know where he's from. He's from New Jersey. And Kara 
and her dad Joe. Are, she's a Canadian farm girl on Instagram. So we ran into a bunch of great people today. We're just having a lot of fun, learning a lot. And uh, boy, there's a lot of distraction going on here. The trade show isn't huge, but there's a lot of great things packed into this space. So if I get a chance to get an interview with some of these people later on, I, I'll, uh, I'll share it with you. So even if you can't afford to stop at these shows, it's just cool to check it out. I would love a combine like that someday or a new John Deere X9. This sprayer has probably at least 120 foot booms, but it sure is cool seeing new shiny paint, even if you can afford it, like I said. I can't whistle, but I sure can admire some nice John Deere new green paint. 410. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I remember when my 6030 was the biggest tractor, two-wheel drive tractor John Deere made back up until uh, 1977, I believe, when it came out with the 4840, it was a little bit bigger. So some might say I'm crazy, but I would really love to have one or two Maverick drones for spraying. You get a big rain and you wanna go out and spray cover crops to burn down in the spring, away you go. Fungicides, insecticides, I think a drone, a spray drone would be cool. I'm probably not smart enough to fly it, it would be Troy's job, but I would love a drone. There's a guy in New York that sprays with one and I gotta talk to him, he sprays with a pair of them actually. So still at Commodity Classic, wandering around the trade show, and just ran into Nick's Scott, AKA Leg Arms, and Bob Welker had a good conversation with them. They said they're proud of me for buying a red tractor. So I figure I better come over and get a little bit of footage of a quad track. Someday we'll own one, but just talking to those guys, comparing where they farm in the arid, uh, the arid far north and where we farm in Western New York and the mud and the challenges we have and the dry weather and the challenges they have. Both have gro short growing seasons, but Someday I'll have a big bud, but they had to go and ruin that, make them popular, so, so there's none available. But anyways, great talking to them guys and uh, just, just enjoying this trade show down here. So it's always sad leaving the Commodity Classic. They got some cool stuff here, great people. Just talked to Marion Calmers about stratification in, of nutrients in the top of the soil and his knife rolls that you put on your combine head. Would love to buy a set of them. So. Um, Yep, it was a great show, sure enjoyed it, and can't wait to come to Houston next year and see what the Commodity Classic brings. Thanks for watching the video, like, subscribe, and uh, as always, we'll see you next time on The Way We Farm. Great day to feed the world.